so we have understood by now how to work on rnn network now what we are going to do is we are going to create a small project or case study you can say where we will learn that how using rnn network we can create something like a pos tagger now in order to work on this um what we are going to do is we need to install some sort of packages as well now here uh, so we will also understand how to perform even bidirectional rnn and even the gated gru and lstm as well so we will be discussing all that with the help of kedas library now in order to get to that uh, before we start working on this project or any other further project for rnn networks you need to install few packages so i want you to make sure that you have installed some packages so you can hit this following commands uh, if you have not done so one is pip install nltk okay so this is going to be your nltk package what you need to install second is pip install keras this you must be already be having by now but i'm just telling what are the important thing you need third i need is gensim fourth i need is seaborn also make sure that you do download the required data and uh, these packages on your machine as well uh, so like you have to do like import nltk okay and you need to download some of the uh, important things for example you need nltk dot download brown people who are already coming from nlp sessions you are already aware of this there's nothing new second thing i need is the same uh, nltk download and we can define tree bank okay similarly nltk download you can say um, con l 2000 okay similarly you can also have a uh, punct and the last you need to also have universal tag set okay now in this case uh, what exactly we are going to do in pure stack as people who are coming from again from nlp courses they they you are already aware of it but just to have a quick review you have a sentence and in that sentence you would like to define who is what what i mean by that is you would like to define that what is the sentence in in a sentence what each word is talking about let me open up uh my notebook to give you some more detailed idea about this so here you can see that we know from english grammar we have lot many things like adjective and you know that adjectives are like new good high special big local similarly you have a uh, adposition adverb conjunction which are and or right a noun uh, so you have also noun like year home cost verb uh, punctuation marks numeral and so on so, so there are so many uh, tags being available to us and what we want to do is uh, any english sentence we are aware of we would like to assign the tag for it so if i say that uh, let's say if i come back here and say ram eats food so now in this case i should be able to assign that whether ram is a noun or a verb or adjective what is that similarly eats is what similarly food is what right so like here we know that ram is a noun right so i want this to be all done with the help of uh, our rnn network so we will have a training data set which we are going to use for it 
and using that we are going to create now we all know that english language as such is little ambiguous as well so we need to be little careful here for example let's say if i have a sentence one where i say this is a green leaf now in this case this particular word green is adjective right this is an adjective similarly if i make another statement i like greens in my food now in this case this greens is no more an adjective in fact this is going to be a noun now you may say that it is plural no it's not the case i will show you another statement let's say i say the green that you see there is a golf course now in this case if you notice this green is going to be a noun okay so again uh, you can see that every statement you cannot say that this particular word is always going to be a noun or it's always going to be an adjective so english language is little ambiguous and definitely that's the reason this pure stacking becomes little difficult even for a human sometime it becomes very difficult to know all this but we will do the same thing now with the help of rnn network and using that we are uh, going to proceed so uh, in order to work down on this code we will be loading some packages and followed by we will follow some important steps so just to let you know that what are the steps we are going to follow so we are going to start with pre processing of the data which is going to be very important before we start working on it we need to make sure that our data is in the format which we can use it for uh, and pass it to the rnn algorithm similarly we will then apply the simple vanilla rnn just to show you that how it works uh, and then we will perform some web word embeddings we will talk about lstm we will talk about gru we will talk about bidirectional lstm and then followed by how to evaluate the particular model so all these steps is what we are going to learn uh, so all the theory which we have gone through till now you will be able to relate with all of that and you will be able to also compare whether lstm uh, and gru are working little better than vanilla rnn or not or what are the differences what we are noticing when we are applying bidirectional is my number of parameters increasing as we were discussing about bidirectional is my training time increasing or not all these things we will do that in this uh, particular case study and project so now let's start working on this problem statement so you can see here that most of the frequently used tags are available here with us pure tags like adjective noun conjunction pronoun verb and so on in this case we have also taken an extra act uh, basically one called as x if you do not fall in any of them then in that case you just start putting those words into this a uh, new x value itself now so going further uh, as we already discussed that we are going to first pre process the data then we going to apply the vanilla rnn on top of it followed by some word embeddings where we have to make sure that we provide the input as a numeric format if you remember or the neural networks input could not be of the text type they should be of some numeric type so we will use some sort of word embedding for it then we will apply the uh, even lstm and gru networks followed by bidirectional lstm and in the end we will learn about model evaluation so to start with we are going to import lot of packages so uh, most of them you are already familiar with so these are all nltk packages freebank brown call z2000 uh and you can also see we are importing seaborn and we do have 
uh, all this sequential embedding dense time distributed it all these packages are required for your rna network so to start with we are going to uh, take the data from these very famous uh, data set like universal uh, we will take from tree bank from brown data set we also have a universal in it uh, in call 2000 also we have a universal in it and we will save that again uh, in nlp lectures we have already seen this kind of thing so this is something not new for all of you now when i combine all these three uh, different data sets which are being provided and if we just see this uh, particular data how it is inside it so you can see that actually this is one particular full statement tag sentences i can also show you like if i hit for one uh, you can see that it's showing me uh, mr winken is chairman of elsevier right uh, nv the dush publishing group right and for each word it is telling that what is going to be the tag statement whether it's a noun whether it's a uh, different like determinant or it's it's whatever right so this is how this data set is now let me also change uh, again and show you that see that it's it's just one statement right so uh, if i make it two you can see that it's now stating that uh, rudolf agnew uh, comma 55 years old and former chairman of consolidated gold fields plc and so on right so and main thing here is you can see that we do have again for each word it is telling that whether it's a noun or uh, it's a numeric it's a conjunction it's a adverb verb what is that so this is what the data set is so we need not require any csv file for it the reason being was we can do it uh, with the help of these packages because these packages already do provide us are uh, the things we need uh, from the data set now so actually this is what we have just seen right uh, we have seen that mr winikan is the chairman of elsevier and we have seen that in why for each it's being mentioned like this now what i would like to do is i would like to bring uh, because right now my data set is in this format right what i want to do is i would like to put all these things this part into x okay i would like to keep it in x and this part this whole part where i am talking about this tags i would like to keep it in y so i would like to separate them out so that it will help me in training my network so how to do that for doing so we have written a particular function here so you can see this function in this function we initially took uh, these two arrays as uh, like having nothing right now and you can notice here that what you are doing is from the tag sentence what is tag sentence it was like mr comma whatever then after that some other word comma tag and so on right so like this so we are going to loop over this whole data and what we will do inside is that uh, basically we will take two variables we will store all this so you can see that in x sentence we are just appending whatever is coming from x means from zeroth because this is going to be zeroth and this is going to be one right this is array indexes so in this y sentence you keep the tag part and in the end just save all these things into your x or y okay so this is what uh, we are going to do in this case and let me just quickly show you that how the data will also look like so you can see here that for x uh let's say if i say x1 uh it's going to return me all the x side of the things if i make it y1 it will be noun comma noun comma pronoun comma adverb and so on right so like this now remember it's a many to many network and at the same time this many to many network is also uh having the equivalent because for each word we should have a tag right so we are going to have a quick verification of this later as well so but before this what we will do we will make sure that all this uh uh like words let's convert it to a common form so we have made sure that it convert to lower case we took the set of it and we calculated the length so what you're checking is that how many total number of words we have what is the total number of tags we have unique tags unique uh, words 
So you can just return it here. We can see that uh, this is the length of your X means this is a total number of tag sentences you have. Uh, similarly, you can see how many, uh, what is the vocabulary size and how many tags you have. So in this, you can see that after combination, we had almost 12 tags in it. Now, again, this is same thing, uh, just uh, which I showed you above that what is you're going to be an X, right? So it is just representation of same thing that X zero is nothing but having now all the values on the left hand side thing like uh, the words and for why it's going to be noun and so on. Now let's uh, see the length of both. Definitely they should be equal as I said because it's many to many relationship with equal words. So here you can see that for the first x0 and y0 we have the length of a t in both the cases. Now let's, uh, so this is again the same x1 we have used it here. I mean just to show you that what was the data. Now, if you recall, the problem was that we cannot use in neural network the text as it is. We do have to convert this to a numeric format. So we will use a tokenizer function from Keras library to encode my text sequence to the integer sequence. So this is going to help me to uh, convert it back to uh, the, the sequence format. So this is what we are going to now do in uh, the next lecture. So I will uh, make you understand that how we can perform all this encoding and all that. And uh, you will notice that then the input is going to be in the format, which I can fe easily feed into the RNN network. So as we were discussing in the last session, now we will vectorize this X and Y. So we already know how my X is going to look like. Now, in order to move further, we uh, we we would like to uh, tokenize it with a tokenizer function, which is a very vanilla technique. Here, one more thing to note of is we will assume that each statement is independent of the other statement here. Let's say if I know that there's a word he, so I know that in that particular sentence, it may be a pronoun because it may be just referring to some person. Now, this is something which, but it, it should have like nothing to do with respect to some other sentence as such. So in short, it should be, uh, all the POS tagging should relate only to that particular sentence and not something other than that. So now what we are going to do, we are going to use this simple vanilla technique to convert a word to uh, the numeric format. So what we are going to do, we are going to call this tokenizer and in this tokenizer, I'm going to say that fit on text and I'm passing my value X to it. And once we are doing this, we are also going to call from this word tokenizer. We are saying text to sequence. So this is going to help you to use the tokenizer to encode input all the sequence X, which we have done here. And same thing you can also notice that we are doing for our Y as well. So we are calling this tokenizer. We are uh, doing the fit tokenizer on this Y data set. And once we are done, we again call this text to sequence method. And this is going to help me to convert again to the numeric data form. So you can see it here. Uh, this was my original X zero and this is my original Y zero which was nothing but this, right? And here also you can see that in Y as well, we have all the noun, pronoun and so on are uh, related to that word. Let's see the corresponding encoded data, which we have just done using tokenizer. So here we see that X encoded. So you can see that uh, what it have done, it have given some sort of uh, numeric value for each word. So like for this pair is representing 6423, Winken is representing 24,231 and so on. Similarly, you can also notice one more thing here. Uh, if uh, like for example, noun is given a numeric value one. So the same noun, if it is appearing, it is always going to be one only. So you can see that the next was also noun. We are giving it one only. Then it's a dot. So we gave it three. Let's see if there's any other noun. Yes, you have. 
and you can see that it, the corresponding value for it is again one only. Okay, so the same numeric value is going to fall in. In case if you have a similar word coming up, whether it's a tag or a similar word also, but more or less what we want to notice here is that we have converted using tokenizer into that uh, numeric representation. Now we also just want to make sure that uh, the length of both this uh, for the whole uh, corpus it should not happen that there of there is any one of it which is of different length. So if my sentence one is of length uh, something, then uh, sentence two is also going to be means a uh, corresponding noun pronoun when I say sentence two, I'm talking about why that should be also of equal length. We have already seen that. But after we have done in uh, this transformation to numeric, it should not happen that it have changed a bit. So if you want, you can use this function to check this up. So this is a very simple function which is written and we are checking the length of our part. And you can see that it's telling me that zero sentences have uh, disparate input output length. So there's no problem in input output. All the data set is in the format what we need. So till here, what we have done was that we converted the raw text into the numeric format. Now, this is not enough. Definitely, we have to still do uh, an embedding of all these words. We will see that later, how we are going to do that. But before that, there is one very important thing what we have still missed out. Um, the problem is, see, our data is of the format like this. Uh, I'm only talking about X right now, not let's say about Y. So we have the data. Let's say there is a sentence which is like, he is a good cook. Okay. Let's say I made another statement. Um, today is holiday. Can you notice a difference between them other than the meaning? Of course, this statement is almost like uh, five words long. And this statement is three word long. Now you may say then what's the problem? Problem is if you recall when we were passing the data to RNN, right? So our input was going like this. This is my input. Now I had uh, these as hidden layers, right? And in the last, we have output. Now, what we will do here, we pass the data not just one sentence at a time, right? So let's say the first statement is there second statement is there there will be thousands of statements like this but we are not going to pass them just one at a time instead we may be passing them as a batch of these things together right batch of multiple statements together now you may say that what's the problem problem is if you are sending as a batch thing together maybe in a matrix format or so uh, now definitely this we need to stabilize right this we need to fix somewhere it cannot happen that for one statement, I can keep 20 word length and for another, I can keep 10 word length, right? That's, this is something which I cannot do. So I need to fix this input word length. So we have to do uh, or, uh, some sort of transformation in the text so that every statement almost falls into the same zone. Now, in our case, what we are going to do is, let's say, uh, I have one statement of five words. I have one statement of three words. So one strategy could be that I do a padding. Padding means either I can truncate or I can add something to it. Now, what do you mean by this? So either I can add it to make it five length or I can make this to three length. So in short, 
we would like to bring them to the same scale so that we can work on this now what we can do in this what how we are going to solve this in this case we we are going to perform truncation as well as addition both the things together we are going to perform in this particular case study now what we will do we will uh, pad with the value zero okay so zero will be a special value which is not allocated even to any word or any tag so we will use this zero so what we will do is we will decide a length okay we will decide a length what we want to stick for this input network so this input network we will decide a length uh based on some of our logical thinking if you want you can take it take it as a hyperparameter also now we will decide this particular length and we will fix it anything lesser than this let's say i decided the word length to be uh, 100 let's say i took it 100 now let's say a first statement came and i have 70 words in it so what i'm going to do is i am going to put 30 zero to make it up 30 zero to make it up before this 70 words values whatever is going to be here okay this is what i am going to do so what i just did so uh, if i have decided the maximum length of a word is 100 and if i get something let's say like 50 50 words so i have like for all 50 i have some numeric representation so what i am going to do extra is before this i will add 50 zeros as a padding stuff okay so this length will also be 50 in that case now what about if in case any statement comes of 150 word length what we are going to do in that case now i know that my maximum size is 100 and i want something till 150 so what i will do is um so you have to think on this part like say i want to just make my network learn at what phase it should be a uh, noun pronoun means i want to assign pos tag so maybe i have decided 100 based on the factor that if a word if a sentence is let's say we have already trained it till 100 uh, words in a sentence probably that should be more than enough means that's again uh, we we could have chosen some other number as well you can play around with this so but what you will do in this case if my word statement comes with 150 character and i have 100 now in that case definitely i need to truncate right because i have decided my maximum length to be 100 so i cannot change it anymore so what i will do so let's say i have all these uh, 100 values so oh, sorry 150 words so what i will do i will pick up the first 100 and keep it here and the remaining 50 i will truncate it i will remove that this is the logic which we are going to apply in our problem statement so let's go and see that how we are going to do this so look at this part so what we are going to do we would definitely for do perf before performing this part sequence we would like to make sure that just see that what is the maximum length of any sentence present into this and for doing so we were calculating the length and you can see that we are getting the max of it and we are getting almost like 270 length uh longest sentence that's not bad right i mean it's not bad for i'm saying it's in fact is huge 270 word sentence is the highest so what we did we already have got all the lengths of all the sentence so we draw a box plot just to see that how the distribution looks like so looks like most of my words are falling even uh, almost like closer to 10 20 or so right uh, if you look at the median this median is in fact sounding like it is uh, somewhere closer to 20 right and even if you see this quartile it's even hitting uh, somewhere like uh, 50 right now there are so many outliers due to which basically we got the highest length as 271 which is shown in this part so maybe we can decide that i can probably stop here i, I could have gone even a little further i could probably stop here because this is giving a good idea even these are outside range only i could have even stop at 50 but okay let's let's start with 100 so that we don't lose much of the sentences from here so in order to do this what i'm going to do i'm just going to choose in this case the maximum sequence length as 100 and in this case what we will choose the same method that anything lesser than 100 we will prepad it when i say prepad means we will add them before all the zeros 
and if the word length is greater than 100 then we will start truncating from the last okay for all those things so i can see that i'm using a path sequence for my encoded x i am telling that my max length should be 100 i am telling pre uh, basically for telling that okay anything uh, of if i have to add in the padding just uh, add it before means all the zero should come before and truncating post means the last values after 100 start removing them up the way we just understood same thing i need to do with the y also right now let's see the values you can see that i'm looking at x padded and y padded so you can see that initially all these values are zero and after that the numeric representation is pitching similar thing is happening for y also which is pretty obvious so now we have saved all this value into x and y now the next thing would be we will talk about word embeddings okay so let's do that in the next video lecture seeing in the last part that we are not going to use a, a word and an integer value for it but instead of that we are going to use something called as word embeddings now you may also question that why word embeddings why not one hot encoder which also works well there is no problem with one hot encoder but look at this how it works so let's say you have 60,000 words in a vocabulary now you're talking about a word called as joy okay which is a part of this 60,000 word vocabulary so what will happen is there will be 59,999 values as zero okay so this is going to be zero length in middle somewhere the value will be one which will be belonging to some index i which will be related to joy and that is going to be the part now look at this this huge thing is 60k dimension which is huge so better than that we use something called as embedding embedding we know it from the nlp section so i'm not going to go into much more depth about it but uh just to give you a rough idea so in word embeddings you can think of it like an n-dimensional vector which you choose what you want to let's say this is a 300 dimensional data vector now here you uh, basically if you have a let's say a word which is related to let's say desk right so now if there is any other word which is bench this bench and this desk is going to be very much near to each other they're not going to be very far apart now definitely in 2d i cannot draw it a three-dimensional vector but all the words which are very similar in nature are going to fall kind of together now let's say there's a word called as fish this is going to be completely very different vector in terms of length or direction where it will go it's going to be very different so this is what you will be having in while doing the embedding now there are a lot of pre-trained embeddings which are available to us so we are going to use one of them uh, because it's not worthy that you create your own embedding vector though you can do so but it's not worth when already is being provided to you uh, uh, by this community and you can use that because it's already been pre-trained on a huge data and for you collecting that huge data and training will take up a lot of time so it's better to use that pre-trained network i will provide you the link also from where you can download and start looking at it now in our case we will decide that instead of having like like we have seen that um, uh, when we use one hot encoder maybe we will have to use 60k thousand uh, length vector if in assuming that it's a 68,000 vocabulary size so in our case we will decide that we will go with the length of only 300 now definitely in embedding it's not going to be like 0001 definitely it could be some other values like it could be 0 0.2 or 0 0.86 2.92 like this means any value could be there but it will be the length of that particular word would be only 300 so that's what is gonna be the case in this part so now uh, so one more thing to keep in mind remember we had 12 pos tags right and we added one zero as a padding corrector so that have actually no specific pos but since we have added it so now due to this it became now 13 pos stack kind of stuff so now since for y we have only 13 
maybe it makes sense that I go for one hot encoder here rather than using embedding. Because here it's it's already 13. Why do you want to create an embedding of 300? It for X size, it makes sense to use embedding because the vocab length was huge. But that is not the problem when we go to Y axis. So we will use one hot encoder for that case. So let's see how we are going to use all this thing. So there are two famous uh, embedding which is available to us. One is word to vec and second is glove. We have already discussed this in the NLP sections. So uh, we need not bother about it much. Now, what is the dimension of word embedding? It's going to be vocabulary size comma embedding dimension. So let's say we decided to use embedding dimension as 300 and whatever vocabulary size we have already seen it above. So that is we will be using it up. So what is the word we have with us in this case? We are going to use that. Now, what we are going to do, we uh, you have to download this uh, from this link which I have provided you. This will help you to download the word to vec download. And what you can do, you can just download and keep it in the same directory where you're running the notebook or you can provide the full path also, it's fine. Uh, just have patience, it's almost like 1.5 GB. It will be a zip file, so you have to unzip it, okay? And then only it will work. Now, secondly, uh, what you're doing is you are taking this from Gensim, uh, that Gensim library keyword, uh, sorry, keyed vector. Now, just to show you up so that you don't get confused with that. So you can see here that we are using this jensen.model import keyword. So this is what we are using in this case. So let's come down. Now, secondly, uh, so what we are doing is we are saying load word to vec format. We are giving the path. Path basically is nothing but this file which we have provided. And we are saying that, okay, let's let's basically get all the word to vec. Means we are just going to load all the word to vec. And we have used this function from this library. Now you can see that, let's say I'm going to say, uh, because this have now already the trained data. So I can say word to vec, most similar, where this belong, the word is very, means the vector is very much similar to king. Vector is very similar to woman. But on the negative side, the vector is man, means uh, I don't want a man, means the negative vector. But I want a king and a woman. So definitely the first thing which comes in my mind, king plus woman minus man, seems to be like a queen vector which should be very similar, right? From our intuitive English, what we can make out. Similarly, you can see some other names also coming up related to a lot of queens and all that. So that is the embedding what it is showing up uh, for you for this word. You can play around with a few more uh, words in this case as well. Now, as we have decided that we will keep the embedding size to be 300. So that's what you're doing here. Secondly, uh, I'm taking the length of uh, basically for this word tokenizer dot word ender. What is this word tokenizer? Let me go back and show you here. So if you recall when we were converting the values to numeric. So first thing was that we had this tokenizer. We took the word tokenizer fit on text, right? So we stopped it here. And after that, we converted it to numeric by using this text to sequence. So now we don't want to convert it to text to sequence. We will use this X uh, and basically we have it as a part of word tokenizer. And now we would like to have an embedding on top of it. Okay. So that's what we are going to do here. Now let's come down here. We can see that we just had this length of vocabulary size. Now, Secondly, what we did, we, we already know that the dimension of the embedding vector should be vocabulary size comma embedding size. So we have put across all the zero initially in this. Now, secondly, what we will do is we will create a word index for each. So we will give some word indexing for each word which is present in that tokenizer. And then we will run this loop. And what this loop will do, this is going to get all the item, item means key value pair. And we'll keep on assigning that word index to uh, embedded weights. Right? Very simple state forward code what you can notice here. And you can notice that we, in the end, when we got this embedding weight matrix, the shape is going to be uh, 300 is what we have chosen for the embedding vector. And this is the vocab size, right? This is perfect. Now, just to see that whether we have done it perfectly or not, we can just check it up with for the word, let's say joy. Let's let's check it up for the word joy. And for this, we have to just use this function called as word underscore index. 
and you can notice that it will show you for the word joy some 300 length vector and you can see that it's not 0 1 so in what one hot encoder it used to be like 0 1 but here it's going to create a 300 dimensional vector for you which will have some value okay so that's what we have done in this case for y we will use one hot encoder as we discussed already so we are just converting to one hot encoder so we had the value of y we just converted it to this and you can see that we are going to print the first output sequence which is in front of you okay i will also talk more about this in the next session okay so in the last session we saw the embedded vectors and we saw that we got almost 300 dimensions here now let's look at the y right so for the y part we if you recall there were total 13 values including 0 so we have like 0 and 1 and 11 13 and so on right so uh, and if you remember since we have uh, created the shape of uh, the size as 100 we have chosen that we will keep it till 100 size that's the reason you're seeing a lot of zeros and all that so right now this is y now what i want to do is i would like to change the shape of this y so if you will look at the shape of this current y this is going to be 72202,100 i would like to convert it now with respect to uh, one more dimension and that's what we have done here so I added this 13 as well so we because we have used one hot encoding here right so that's basically going to add one more dimension to it which is going to be 13 now let's go ahead and see the rest of the part so you can see now the value of y is going to sound like this value of x if you recall uh, which we had done earlier where we converted to numeric yes later we will link it to embedded vectors also but actually we are going to try with random embedded vectors and so on and then we will use word to vec also we will use all of that so i want to show you all the variations present in, inside this code so now here you can see that we have x now what we have done is we converted it to train and test data uh, with x and y what we have and uh, from the training data we created a validation data set also again for 15 percent now let's uh, print the shapes of all these metrics so you can see here that we have uh, x train shape y train shape so as obvious you can see that this is my x train shape this is y train shape and you can also see that for y train we have an extra dimension which is obvious because we have done one hot encoding for this for now so and right now this x what you're seeing is definitely without embedding because it was before what we have created we will use the embedding part bring it up later so now you can see that this is validation data set and this is testing data set now when we try to feed the data to uh, rnn the it is it is going to expect you the data into this format number of samples number of timestamp and number of features so you can see a number of samples number of features and this is number of uh, timestamp so this is how the data is going to be expected out of it but the problem is we have seen just now that for x we have this only two dimensions we we, we have not yet uh, uh, basically have any third dimension that's because we are going to use word embedding in this case before feeding the data before feeding in the data to the rnn network hence there is no need to explicitly mention the third dimension in this case that's because when you are going to use the embedding layer in keras in fact let me show you from where i'm just talking all this i have already written down this for you when you are using embedding layer in keras you are training the data uh, your uh, basically you the training that you, you are training the data will automatically be converted to this format so now this features is nothing but it's going to be your embedding dimension which will automatically come so you need not bother about it okay so that's the reason we are not going to bother but if you're not using embedding you have to then reshape it to the appropriate dimensions as well okay otherwise it will not work now let's move on so uh, what we are going to do further would be we we are going to discuss now uh, three different variations so uh, we, we are basically going to now build the model specifically RNN model so we are going to use word embedding to represent the word 
Now, while training the model, you can also train the word embedding as well, okay, along with the network weights. So this, you can do it along in the training process. These are often called as embedding weights. When we are training the word embedding also, this is called as embedding weights. While training the embedding weights, um, the embedding weights will be treated as a normal weight of the network, which you can update at every iteration. So now what all I am going to tell you of, so there will be three situations what I'm going to now speak out. So first network, what we are going to build is going to be an RNN with a randomly initialized untrainable embedding. Okay. So let me note down. So it is going to be RB really initialized. untrainable embeddings. What do you mean by that? Now in this model, we will initialize the embedding weight arbitrarily as the name suggests. Further, we will freeze the embedding. That is, we will not even allow the network to train them up. Okay. So that's going to be the first case when we will see how it's working. Second is going to, we are going to build an R, uh, again, the RNN model. Here we are going to again choose arbitrary initialize, but trainable embedding. Okay. So we will allow the embedding to get trained. So RB initialize, I'm just writing the shortcut for it, but this is going to be trainable embedding. Okay. Now the third case is going to be, um, your trainable, uh, basically we are going to draw this RNN, but here it's going to be trainable word to vec embedding. Okay. This is what we're going to do. So in this experiment, we will use in fact word to vec word embedding and also allow the network to train them further. So these are the three things we are going to perform now going further. So now we are going to uh, train our models uh, with uninitial, uninitialized fixed embedding and we will not even allow it to train uh, those embeddings to be trained further. So what we have done, we took this number of class uh, which is going to be 13. Perfect. We are creating a sequential model. Now here we are passing the adding the embedding layer. So I told you already we are going to uh, arbitrary initialize it. So here you can see that I'm just giving my vocabulary size, giving my embedding size which we have chosen to be 300 before and max sequence length. Remember this also we have set it before. Now this trainable is false, which basically tells that please do not allow uh, to update any type of uh, the embeddings. So we don't update the embeddings at every iteration in this case. Now, further to this, we are creating a simple, uh, simple RNN network with 64 RNN cells. We are already aware of what is all this. And we are passing the return sequence as true, which means that return the whole sequence. If we pass it as false, then it will return the single output. Okay. Now in the last, uh, we are going for the output class. We are going to uh, also add as a dense connection, but uh, to the software function, but we are also adding this time distributed part. Now what this time distributed is doing here. Uh, so we, we don't want to wait for the whole sentence to complete, uh, especially the training time at least. So we say that, let's say we, uh, we say he, so we know that, okay, let's say is a pro now, um, he is going right. So based on that. So we, we, even we don't want the statement to complete. We, we want, uh, at the every time step to start the prediction process if it can. So that's what this, uh, time distributed is going to help you out with this. Now further to this is simple. We have already seen this type of things earlier. We adding the loss optimizer as Adam, we are saying the metric as accuracy. We look at the summary. Now look at this part. This is important how many trainable parameters we going to have. So we have almost 24,205 parameters. So this is the number of parameters we are going to train. You can see it's huge, but not that huge. Then we are going to fit the model with X train, Y train, batch size 128, epochs 10, 
validation data and so on we passed it up and you can see that with the just a very vanilla model itself we are getting validation accuracy of like 95.8 which is pretty good now further to this uh, we can visualize the training model as well so you can see here that we are plotting this uh, for the train and test both and you can see how this accuracy is almost very close right so that's what we can find out now let's move further and now what we are going to do we are going to again randomly create the embedding vectors but this time i would like it to be trainable okay we are making this uh, part as true so i am letting it to be trainable that's the major difference which is going to come here and remaining things are exactly same you can see that we are passing 64 rnn cells rn network we are still doing that time distributed we are compiling with the same th steps now look at the summary there's a small difference here you can see that trainable parameters increase and that's obvious because now we are also uh, letting the embeddings to be updated at every iterations so we will be treating it just like weights now then we're going to fit the model uh, you can see that we are passing again x train y train batch size and so on and this time definitely we are getting a little better accuracy we are getting 98.93 the uh, percent of validation accuracy let's draw this plot it's not bad actually if you look at it we definitely the deviation is almost starting from 99 accuracy right so training is going up here it's going here so we we like the epochs we are getting in almost one epoch itself this is started happening but that's okay means you can see that majorly this is working better when we are allowing embedding to also get updated now we would like to also see that what's going to happen if we use word to vec which we had created it earlier so what will be the case is it going to be better than 99% <laughs> what you are getting so to be precise here we got 99. Point, oh sorry we are getting somewhere around 98.93 right almost like 99% accuracy which is not bad <laughs> right because if we see this 98.93 is pretty good so let's see if, uh, if my word to vec could beat it it should actually go like beyond 99% accuracy let's let's see whether that's going to happen or not so now let's uh, use the pre trained uh, embedded weights and we will also allow the vector to be updated as per our requirement uh, so you can see here that we are passing this embedded weights which we had created using word to vec and rest of the thing seems to be similar and we are also allowing the trainil, uh, training to happen in this case now rest of the things are same you can see we are using still 64 rnn cells we are using this time distributed uh, with a dense layer and here we are compiling with the same thing loss is cross entropy optimizer is adam metric is accuracy and we did a summary of this you can see here that we do have parameters like 17 lakh or 17 million 858 905 right so this many number of trainable parameters is what we got let's fit this model uh, we got the x train we got the y train we are putting the batch size epochs giving the validation data and so on okay now when we are fitting this model um we are also looking at train and test accuracy and you can notice here one interesting thing that my accuracy have now gone up more than 99 which is good so you can notice that we have definitely gone beyond 99% and uh that 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 happened from 98 right so definitely it's performing better now we are comparing the train and test accuracy the um, not much of the difference you can see that it's almost between 98 99 so it's it's all good let's do the same thing for lstm network for an lstm network uh we just want to see that whether this is going to behave better in comparison to what we have already done here now in this case lstm uh, when we are using you can see that uh, we are still using embedding weight major difference is coming 
when we have to pass this as LSTM, right? So that's a small difference in the syntax what we are going to put in. Now, remaining thing are same. Uh, you can see that we are keeping exactly the same thing up. And we compile with the same values. Uh, and with the summary, you can see that we have uh, 17, 9, 28, 985 trainable parameters. And we fit the model with the same values, 10 epochs, batch size 128. And let's see the accuracy. It is 99.15. So it have definitely been a boost from 99.05 to 99.15. So LSTM is working better. But we have seen that it's a marginal improvement. Um, however, if you use an LSTM model in other task lists such as language translation, image captioning, time series forecasting, then you may see a significant boost in the performance in that case. What I mean is if you have like more uh, bigger sequences, you will notice that LSTM is going to perform. Here in this case, it was already performing well. So <laughs> there, there, there was very less scope of being an improvement. So that's the reason we are not able to see it well. Now let's go to GRU. So let's see that how GRU is going to behave. So we are using the same embedding weights. We are going to put the GRU here. Rest of the things are same. We compile with the same values. We do a summary. Now notice one thing. There is a small drop in number of uh, trainable parameters, which was expected. Here it is 17905. Okay, 17905. And if I look here, it was 17,928. So definitely there's a, a kind of a difference of around 20,000 or so, right? So there's a slight uh, less parameters what we have to deal with here. Now let's fit this model. Uh, you can see that we are going to fit across all these values. Now there is a small drop, which is not very significant, 0 0.02 drop. From 99.15, we are getting 99.13. But at the same time, we have also reduced up to some level the uh, number of parameters. And you can also see the graph is also working great, means it's not having, no, train and test is almost very similar. One more thing which I wanted to note, other than number of parameters what we have used, is the training time. Look at the training time, what we are spending on GRU model. So you can see that we have like 71, 69, right? So all this training is either 60s, most often 60s, or one or two are in 70s, right? Let's go and check the LSTM. Now here, if you notice this training times, we have like 89, 70s and so on, right? So can you see a clear difference in the time what is also taking up in the training side? So definitely GRU is taking less training time because it have to deal with less parameters and there were a few things which we have already discussed on the theory side. On the other hand, when we uh, also compare with the vanilla model, which is not using this, you can notice that here it is just 29 seconds and this. Even GRU, it's almost half of the GRU, right? Or more than half of the GRU. And that's expected because if you recall in vanilla RNN, we just had the weight matrix coming from recurrent and weight matrix coming from four feet forward. And we were just going ahead and kind of uh, uh, multiplying these matrix with respect to weight and uh, inputs coming and that's it. But if you recall the network diagram for LSTM or GRU, uh, we had much more things coming up, right? So we were doing a lot more computations there. That's the reason you will notice definitely a good difference with respect to the time of training what it's going to take in this case. So the takeaway is that definitely GRU is doing well uh, along with LSTM, which we were expecting. Uh, now going further, we would also like to see that how this bi-directional is going to work and how we generally work with the bi-directional part. So let's do that uh, in the next video lecture. So now let's create the bi-directional LSTM. Let's talk about that. So let's see if it can do any better than what we have already seen. So for this, uh, again, we're using the same embedded weights. Uh, we are
passing LSTM, but we are just using bidirectional in this case. And rest of the things are same. You can see that we are passing the same parameters. We are looking at the summary. Uh, as expected, the trainable parameters have increased as we have already discussed in the uh, bidirectional part. Let's fit this model with all the same values and let's see the output. Oh, that's awesome. Can you see that we have definitely did a good improvement given that it's already touching the roof and still it's able to make 99.39 part. Uh, one disadvantage if you want to see of this is the training time. Remember we were hitting somewhere 60, 70, 80 seconds. Now it have almost doubled down and that is expected because we are using bidirectional. Now here, uh, if you look at this graph, again, they are very close, test and train uh, validation accuracy. Now let's have all this model, model evaluation. So for RNN model, we were able to get somewhere around 99.06 uh, and the loss was 0 0.030. For, uh, if we talk about LSTM model, it was 99.15, a good improvement in accuracy from uh, and then we also notice that the loss is also very minimal we looked for the gre model and we got 99.13 we did for a bi-direction model and we got 99.38 which is a shoot up in accuracy uh, but at the same time the training time have almost gone double so we have to keep that in mind while working on this so this completes this particular case study or project for how to create the PUS tagging. So I hope now you got a good idea that how to work with respect to your PUS modeling and kind of uh, basically create all these things for yourself.